All right, what the fuck is up? Welcome back, but really, welcome in. My name is Noah Hills. Find me on Twitter at No More Parties. And welcome in, because this is the new studio. I'm moving right now. Just moved in. Still in the process of moving all my shit. So posters aren't up on the wall yet. Still moving plants into the house. But for today, this is it. This is the new studio. And another thing that might be new is a guy in the player pool, at least new to this season. He has been gone for a couple years, uh, might be one of the more interesting players in Dynasty now because he's very talented. That's Darius Geis, and we got some news. He was recently at the Hub Football Camp, which I had never heard of before this, but it's a uh, football camp for free agents. And so Darius Geis might be trying to make a comeback here, which means we need to pay attention in Dynasty, so let's get into it. <laughs> Number one, just a quick rundown of the news on Darius Geis in the last couple years. He was arrested on August 7th, 2020 for various like domestic violent sexual assault type situations. Uh, he had a felony strangulation charge that was dropped in January of 2021 and misdemeanor charges dropped in June 2021 after he and victims accusers came to some sort of like financial settlement. And on August 7th, 2020, when the charges were first like brought up when he was arrested. He was waived by Washington on the same day. You know, obviously he was a second round pick back in, what was that, 2018 to Washington. He was part of that like Nick Chubb, Saquon Barkley class. And he ended up being suspended for six games in 2021, though he was obviously not on a team. He was, he was cut. The suspension was lifted in October of that same year. So 2021, just what, like nine months ago, the NFL waived his suspension. So he's currently not in any legal trouble. He is not suspended, but he's also not currently on a team. He's currently an unrestricted free agent. And like I said, he just worked at the hub football camp, which I looked into a little bit. And basically what it is, is it's a uh, kind of like training ground and skills development camp designed to give exposure to free agents and connect them with NFL teams. And it looks like it's available to guys who are like in college, you know, guys who've played like in the XFL, USFL, things like that, guys who are currently just street free agents, getting them exposure, getting them work with professionals to connect them back into the NFL. So he was just there. Reports say he looked good. He supposedly was like running routes, catching passes, showing that he's able to do that. And he is signed with, I believe Young Money is his, or no, not, not Young Money. It's Top Dog Entertainment has a sports agency branch, which is who Darius Geis is represented by. And one of their guys was quoted as saying, Darius is a natural born athlete, leader, and competitor, currently in peak shape and at the top athleticism of his career. And the head of this hub football camp also said he looked good, had a great attitude, looked smooth, catching passes, things like that. And obviously, like we hear all the time that guys are at peak athleticism. Um, so I don't want to put too much stock into that. It's not like we have confirmation that he's, you know, running for 100 yards in the NFL. But I do feel like that's a little bit better than if they had come out and said, like, you know, Darius Geis is working really hard to get back into shape. He wants to prove himself. Like, that tells me he's been sitting on his ass for two years. And top athleticism of his career doesn't actually tell you that he's at the top athleticism of his career. But if he's out at this football camp and people are claiming that he's at the top athleticism of his career, there's video of this camp out there that, you know, NFL personnel can see. They're going to know if he's not at the top athleticism of his career. And so, well, I'm not trying to like pick apart this quote. I do think it's better than if they had come out and said, you know, he's working hard to get back into shape. At the very least, it seems he's already in shape. I think the bottom line is, number one, it's incredibly understandable if you don't want to roster a guy like this, if you don't want to root for a guy like this. He, he's probably a piece of shit. Like, charges were dropped, but he has a long history of, like, shady, illegal, immoral, just shitty behavior. And if you don't want to root for a guy like that, like, that's totally understandable. Don't pick him up. But... It seems he's intent on a comeback. He's going to be part of the player pool in Dynasty. And if your number one priority is winning your Dynasty League, you have to be interested in Darius Geis. So let's kind of jump into it. What could we reasonably expect from Darius Geis at this point in his career? And I think we got a window into that, if my mouse will work. I think we got a window into that in what we saw from him in 2019. He missed his entire rookie season, came back, played early on in his second year, missed more time with an injury. I believe he has injuries ACL, MCL and uh, meniscus, I believe, all on the same knee. So he's got kind of a fucked up knee, but that was, you know, a couple years ago now. He would have had time to recover. But when we did see him healthy for a five-game stretch 
In 2019, he was very, very good. He had 324 yards and three touchdowns in five games, a 29.6% per game dominator rating, which is in the 90th percentile for 22-year-old running backs. And he went 42 for 245 on the ground. That's 5.83 raw yards per carry in the 96th percentile. And, you know, if you've seen any of my videos, you know I like to compare efficiency to the other guys operating within the context of the same offensive system and the other guys for Washington. Darius Geis was outdoing them by 1.73 yards per carry in 2019, which is also in the 96th percentile. And if you account for the box counts he was seeing, his box adjusted efficiency rating was 141% and his relative success rate was 10.2%. Those are 92nd and 91st percentile and his breakaway conversion rate was 75%, which is in the 98th percentile. So he was producing efficiently to an incredible degree relative to his teammates. He was succeeding on his runs to an incredible degree relative to his teammates. So his production was not just fueled by these long runs, these splash plays, although he was producing those. His breakaway conversion rate, 98th percentile. You could make a good argument that on limited work, he was the best running back in the league in 2019. He's one of only 13 guys to do that since 2016, to be above the 90th percentile in both overall efficiency and consistency in those two metrics. And among players who finished second on their team in carries, Geis' 2019 was the fifth best season, according to Bay rating and relative success rate, of the last six years. The, the What he did on limited work in 2019, you know, I, I searched him into Reddit just to see like what the sort of consensus is, sort of what the general feeling is around Darius. Geis. And there were some posts on the Dynasty subreddit back in like this last fall and things like that um, when his suspension got lifted. And there were a lot of people in there saying like, why should we even expect him to be good? Like he wasn't good when he played. And that's just wrong. Like he was incredible on a per touch basis. Yes, it's not a large sample, but we saw him play multiple games. We saw him blow up. We saw him run efficiently. We saw him run consistently succeeding down to down. He was an incredible player when he played. The only guys who finished second on their team in carries since 2016 who had a better like composite between box adjusted efficiency rating and relative success rate than Darius Geis' 2019 are Alvin Kamara's rookie year when if you remember he was historically efficient as a part-time guy, C.J. Anderson in 2018, and that was the year when Todd Gurley was getting MVP buzz, and then C.J. Anderson came on at the end of the year and was better than Todd Gurley was during the season. And people are like, well, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> was this Todd Gurley or is this this just the Rams system? So C.J. Anderson was outproducing Todd Gurley that year. He's one of the guys that was better than Darius guys. Duke Johnson this last season, who was awesome when he came on at the end of the year, and Jordan Wilkins in 2019, who was also very efficient that season. So only a few select guys as backup running backs as part-time running backs have posted better efficiency in their roles than Darius Geist did in his limited work in 2019. And that's not the first time we've seen him be a really good player. You know, back in college, he posted dominator ratings in the 33rd, 86th, and 72nd percentiles on LSU teams that consistently finished in the top 20 in the country. And according to Bill Connolly's S&P Plus system, 75th percentile or greater quality among all teams of running backs drafted since 2007. He broke out as a 19-year-old. His closest production comps based on seasonal dominator ratings, the level of the program that he played at. His best production comps are Sean Moreno, Beanie Wells, LaMichael James, Christian McCaffrey, and Dion Lewis. And as a runner, he was awesome. I like to contextualize rushing performance with volume, with the quality of the teammates that you played, and he saw upper percentile volume, 54th percentile, 162 carries per 12 games, and the running backs he played with were incredible. They averaged, you know, obviously Leonard, Leonard Fournette was on the team. They averaged 4.43 stars as high school recruits. That gives that makes them a 95th percentile group. And given that volume, given the talent level of those teammates, we would expect an NFL quality running back playing in that situation to average 0.11 yards per carry greater than their teammates in college. Darius Geis averaged 0.8 yards per carry greater than his teammates in college, which is in the 61st percentile. And unfortunately, box count data is only available starting the season after Darius Geis left college. So I don't have that, but he was breaking tackles at a 60th percentile rate per attempt. His breakaway conversion rate back in college was also incredible. 92nd percentile based on height, weight, speed, athleticism, and those rushing efficiency metrics. His closest comps as a pure runner in my database are Herschel Walker, Joseph Adai, Frank Gore, and Le'Veon Bell. So those are his top four. I'm not, I'm not skipping, you know, the Jags. Those are the top four. And he was, you know, a decent, not great pass catcher, high catch rate, relatively low volume. I think that's something that he can do. I don't think it's a strength of his, but he's 5'11", 224. He's got sub 4'5 speed, 91st percentile speed score, I believe. And the trump card is he's still less than 25 years old. Among guys who will start the season 
in 2022 at 25 years old or younger, I have Darius Geis rated as a prospect as the sixth best among them. The only guys I would have rated higher than him are Antonio Gibson, Travis Etienne, Brees Hall, Saquon Barkley, and Jonathan Taylor. And among Darius Geis' top 10 overall comps, according to my process, nine out of 10 of them had 1,000 yard seasons in the NFL. He is a no doubt prospect who we saw run efficiently and be productive in college. And then during his only healthy stretch in the NFL, we saw him be incredibly productive and incredibly efficient. He is a very, very good player. And going back to that age thing, he's currently younger than David Montgomery. He's younger than Keyshawn Vaughn, Miles Sanders, Tony Pollard, Damian Harris, Saquon Barkley. He's less than a year and two days older than Ronald Jones, Daryl Henderson, Josh Jacobs, Ramondre Stevenson, Najee Harris, Elijah Mitchell, AJ Dillon, Alexander Madison, Antonio Gibson, and two guys in this draft class, Greg Bell and Ty Chandler, are only a year younger than Darius Geis is right now. If your number one goal is maximizing the odds of your dynasty team's winning championships, then it is irresponsible to not add Darius Geis right now. I don't know what his ownership percentage looks like on MFL or Sleeper, but I was able to track down ownership percentages at the FFPC, which is like high stakes dynasty leagues out of like 980 leagues that they have. Darius Geis is currently owned in 3.5% of them. Odds are he's not owned in your league. Add him for free right now. The odds that he does nothing in the NFL are very high, obviously. He's not even on a team right now. He hasn't played in almost two years, but... I believe he's an elite pure runner. He's still in his prime. And I do think while the odds he does nothing are high, I believe the odds that he posts an RB1 level season at some point in his career are higher than any running back in this draft class other than Brees Hall and Kenneth Walker. I would have had him as the RB2 if he was coming out this year behind only Brees Hall, but he's not suspended. He's not in legal trouble. He's allegedly in shape. And the only barrier to him getting signed by an NFL team is teams deciding that he's not talented enough to warrant signing a piece of shit. But we've seen over and over that teams consistently will decide that a guy is talented enough to overlook the fact that they're pieces of shit. And again, like I said, if you don't want to root for a piece of shit, completely understandable. I might not either, (laughs) but if your goal is to maximize the odds of winning a dynasty championship, Darius Geis has to be on your roster by the time you stop watching this video. If he signs with the team, his value is going to skyrocket. He's currently unsigned. That's to your advantage. You move now. If he doesn't get signed by September, you cut him and you lost nothing. But a higher waiver pickup does not exist in Dynasty right now. Get Darius guys on your team. Profit. Lose nothing. Win championships. Thanks for checking out the video. Hit like. Hit subscribe. See you on Wednesday.